Okay. So in, in Rhino, uh, what the quick uh, fix to this problem is that we need to make double-sided surface or we need an object that has outer surface need to be shown. The way how to do that is, first of all, I will explode the room only. So now you see the difference. Before that, it was inside the surface. So this rhino. Okay, so can you just uh, re refill your screen, your screen, please? Okay, so. Thanks. Can you see it now? Okay, so now actually we, the camera is located inside of an object. And then uh, all the kind of bed or window tables are, we are seeing the outside the surface of a geometry, but the room is actually, we are seeing the inside the surface of a geometry. So that's why this rendering does not visualize it and the same problem goes to Unity 3D. So what I do is I select the room and then I explode. The then this one become one independent surface that has a kind of like a both uh, outer surface or inner surface. Uh, and then actually what we do more is, so we are going to, so I just intentionally delete the surface, the, uh, actually the ceiling to see the inside. And then I select all the surfaces of a room. I mean, it is okay. It might be okay, but I just want to make it sure. Uh, and then, do you see that this, this strange surface is here? Oh, sorry. Yeah. When I orbit around it, this one has a problem in rendering. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. This Xuan and then the two also see that. The problem is that there, is, there are two surfaces overlapped exactly. So this computer have a problem that which one I should show you to you. So now this one actually have a problem in rendering it because there are, are overlap surfaces. And then as you see that here, this one is very thin plane. It's not really a volume. And then this plane cause a problem for any renderer to visualize them correctly. So what I do now is, so I select one surface here. And what I do is I extrude I extrude the surface. Uh, what, I, what I'm doing here is that I'm making a volume out of surface, as you see that. Um, probably you can't get down with this. So now I kind of make it in. So normally, architecturally, many words have a thickness of, in general, at least 10 centimeter. It is a non bearing word, or it will, it will be 20 centimeter if it is a load bearing word. So I just kind of set it as 10 meter for now. So to be millimeter, I just say 0 0.1 meter. So now it become uh, uh, 10 centimeter wall. And this one is actually overlapped with existing wall. So actually you can delete uh, one of surface. So I just delete the original surface. And this surface become a as you see that become an object like other table or window. So you can actually, when you uh, make your own ideal dormitory room, so probably you can make it larger, then actually all you have to do is, after you make a volumetric or volume of bounding box room, just explode it and then convert each surface into a thick wall, that's it. And then I just simply repeat it. So I just repeat, I select this one, uh, X, uh, X through the surface, and then also 0 0.1. And here, uh, uh, you probably see that delete input is currently no. So it will maintain the original surface. So I just click it once. So now it is say yes. And then here I just type 0 0.1 or so. And by doing so, it'll delete original surface and then create a second uh, war. Okay. And then the next one or so same process and 0 0.1. And then also the side war, same process, 0 0.1. And 
and then I would also do the floor surface too. So now you have for second floor, and you probably whether you see it or not here, the uh, Ishan's uh, window is kind of almost exactly overlapped uh, with the side wall. So I just select it, and then I just move it slightly inside of it. So by doing so, I remove the overlapped area. Uh, so this is kind of easy fix to solve, uh, to visualize your room out there. Any questions so far? Oh, and then Ishan, is this your mirror or door? Yes, it's the door, but when I move it, I think like I attached on the wrong midpoint. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the same process, however, uh, yes. Uh, so, so imagine that what would be, how much is, how large room do you want for your dormitory? Uh, I don't know. You may want to have a, at least you may want to have your individual bathroom probably, or kitchen. <laughs> you don't need to draw all those kind of things, but just define some area that you may want to locate your kitchen or uh, bathroom or your mini theater space. Uh, whatever you like to have. Uh, okay. All you have to do is simply move in it's the same thing, move, copy the space for it. That's it. Uh, this is just weekly assignment, so do not invest too much your time on this. Just do some weekly, uh, do some light work. And then, so the what you have to do for your Unity project, uh, first of all, I would check their names and layers. So let's say that or, or room area. So this one is set as, so you have arms. So your floor is called arms. Very great, however. <laughs> okay, so let's just say that uh, I select all the floor and walls. I select them and either, let's say that your room has it. So I change your, the layers of your room as rooms. So it's changed. And then additionally, it is really great to have offer their names as, I just called it room, room component. So at least when you pick it, you know that uh, it has a war. I would say that these are, I would call it war. So give a good name. And then for floor, I just give a name or so double check this is room and room and room and room and then this one is definitely door and then I also give a name door because all the names will be visualized in Unity later so you can actually pick by their names instead of the pick by their locational object and this one is window layer very good so I call this one is also window and bed and bed. Okay, so these two, also I give them bed. And then one thing, what will happen once we transfer these files to Unity is that if their names are bad, they will probably give bad one or bad two. So they are actually uh, I give a good names for that. I just put this on table. And then this one I call as probably human. Probably, yeah. So I kind of give all names and then they are in good layers names. So I think these are ready to go. Uh, I will also, okay, so we have, okay, so. Uh, and then let's kind of export that. So I select all the geometries and then I export selected. And then I change the file format into 3D Studio S. And then I just call it this one as room. Tests right. and as in desktop. Okay, so just uh, I just select OK. I just use the default setting. So this is ready. And now I switch to Unity. So uh, 
I start from a scratch, so I go to five, uh, probably, you know that actually once you started, you probably open unit hub instead of actual project. So I just close the project. And in the unit hub, you can actually start a new project by simply clicking this new project. And then uh, you can actually start with 3D core. And then you can, uh, I should recommend for you to change the location where you can remember it easily. So probably in my case, I always have my own names folder. And I always prefer to use some date to remember it, but how here, I just called it as um, room demo, that's it. Then I just save the project here. Sometimes actually, uh, a folder name should not start with numbers. So other than that, uh, it will be fine. So I know that uh, this is the folder that my files are saved. Then I click create project. Oh, one thing that we need to check. So in Rhino, make sure that where is your file is located. So as you see that, uh, as I explained that uh, everything will, the so Y will be inverted. So I will, I need to explain that. So this one is located X positive and Y positive. But what you will see, everything will be changed. How one thing, everything will be changed, but what you will see will be something like uh, this. So remember that uh, in terms of Y, every object will be rotated 180 degrees. So when we, so this is Unity, this one is default screen. Uh, so when I just re explain that, in, so, so start from, let's start from the bottom area. So bottom area is simply, uh, you will see the names of folders where you save all your files inside of it. So it will be your, basically your archive folder. And then you have assets and so, and the packages. Uh, packages are a kind of library. You need them to use physics engine or cameras or joystick, something like that. So it is packages are related to uh, your headset. And then all other things that you are going to use in this Unity, it will be saved in asset. And then you probably uh, may not sure what are scenes. Are you comfortable about scenes? Okay, so scenes are uh, actually some divided groups of games in games or 3D views. A good way of explaining scenes are, do you know this game? This is my Apple One math game. This is my son's favorite game. Apple One, ah, Apple. So let's say that it's a kind of, many games have same structure like this. Uh, like Angry Bird has the same structure. Oh, Angry Bird is another good example. So let's say that, um, let's wait for advertisement. <laughs> okay. So let's say that this is, there's a game like this and every game is divided by some levels. So this one start with Apple one and then you see one and I think that these individual group are called scenes. Uh, you know that every kind of level uh, and every game you have to finish. So these are scenes. So the same game can be divided by a multiple scenes. And then, so that's the so that's the scenes that you are going to see in Unity. And in Unity, you are going to differentiate these scenes by using a camera. So by locating a camera in a different location on a different land or different area, you can actually divide them by scenes. And then here in the assets, and the assets are just, just terms that all other files are basically called assets, that's it. And then here, okay, so now first thing you're going to do, uh, you can just simply use Explorer. And then just, I just, what I do is just simply move a room test 3ds file into this asset. Uh, in general, uh, a good, uh, uh, 
practice is actually it's better to make create a folder. So let's kind of organize uh, more efficiently. So I just called this one as 3D models because the games may have 3D models, sounds, or interactivity, or other stuff, JPEGs, sounds, animation. So I kind of, you better want to divide them into by making, by creating proper folders. So I create 3D models folder, and then once you double click it, you have, you can see this uh, room test geometry. And as soon as I click this one, you see inspector folder or inspector window shows the details of this room kind of geometry. So since scale factor is one, and this is model and other uh, kind of uh, details of it. So still, but if you have your file in the asset, does not mean that your file is in the view. So to make it, to show your geometry in this camera view, you have to move it to, so there are two ways. One way is you can locate this one in the scene directly, but in this case, you're arbitrarily, you are deciding the position of the objects, which I don't recommend at all. So by bringing your file into this hierarchy folder, the, it will maintain its location in Rhino. So this one is very happy. So once I kind of explain one more time, you can change the visualization style by here scene. Uh, you can actually, you can see them as shadow or wireframe or shaded wireframe. Then probably now you see that previously you have a problem with this one. Okay, let's just test. Okay, so last time we have a problem and then so far let's say that we are okay. And then if you click this icon here that you can see X view or Y view or Z view. And actually the top is actually Y. So probably something you need to learn is that X is exactly X in uh, Rhino. And Z is actually corresponding to Y, but actually Y is reversed. And then uh, the top is actually Y axis. So this one is something Actually, this one is called left-hand coordinate system. Uh, so starting from the sum. So X is here and Y is on top and G is going that way. Uh, but uh, for me, I want, I try to ignore all this stuff and then just simply I kind of perceive it that uh, Y is reversed. It's kind of a little bit easier for you. So now you and then a little bit interface. If you press the fill mouse button, it will be pen. And then if you're scrolling in and out, this one is zoom. And then if you press mouse button, it is orbit. One thing convenient thing you want to know is select. Okay, so if you go to room test, you now see each name. Some numbers are automatically generated. And as you click each name or floor, you see some red line that represent that this object is selected. And whenever we select each object, if you check the inspector window, the name is war, and then it will show the position and scale, but strangely, you see that all the position is actually zero, zero, zero. Table is zero, zero, zero. Human is zero, zero, zero. Floor is zero, zero. Can you understand what does the meaning of this one? Why? They are all differently positioned, but their position is marked as zero, zero, zero. In relative to their initial position? Their reference point is for zero, zero. Because then, where is the reference point is marked? In right. So uh, remember for that, okay. So now we successfully import our object. And now, okay, so what I want to show. So please remember F, and then if you press one thing, if you press F, this will center, move the object, the selected object to the center. This is known as focus. 
So meaning that this will bring the center of the object to the camera target point. So this one is very convenient. So when you orbit it, you kind of, you probably don't know what to do. However, you just select one object that you want to center it around and click press F that it will be the center of your camera. So this is very useful. Okay, so. Yeah, uh, what was the file that we saved? F. Uh, what was the file that we saved? The room uh, 3DS. 3DS. So okay. in Rhino, it's not. okay. No. You oh, don't have it? My 3DS. So you, when you go to file, export selected, you can find 3DS Studio. Okay. Yeah, you need to change that. When the default doesn't show it. Okay. All right, so that's your we're done. So this is so far we change, we just simply import the geometry. Mm. Okay, so I will just kind of uh, uh, explain one more thing. So how we see the world? <laughs> Another philosophical question. Do we really see the object? Because the reason why you see the column or the reason why we see the glass is because there's a glass. No, because we, we can see the glass reflected light on it and the cloud behind it. What does that mean by we see it all those beautiful the mother nature? <laughs> because the light reflected from the object are coming to our eyes. So we see basically only reason why we see the world because the light coming to our eyes. So light is the, actually the fact, the most important fact that actually uh, the kind of our perception of the space and you see, you will see direct light is here. And then something you need to understand is, so direct light is here. And then let's take a look at the inspector window. The position is zero. And in terms of y, so I, I move forward to original uh, uh, x, so kind of original kind of uh, axis. So let's say that position is 0, 3, 0. Okay, so this is the uh, right position. And then, so we said the position x is zero, so you got that x is this axis, the position x is zero, and y is corresponding to height. So meaning that height is three meter. So we hear that this one is on top of the room, meaning that we should build this room at three meter height. And then z is also zero, meaning that uh, each y is zero. And then directional light, it doesn't really matter. The directional light is simply defines the direction of the light. And then it doesn't really matter where it is located. It's simply uh, you place this light wherever you can easily select, and that's it. But in Unity 3D, we don't really select any object directly. We generally select by its name. So it doesn't really matter. However, what is important is rotation. So X is 50. Y is minus 30 and Z is zero. And in here, do you see that hand move, hierarchy move and rotate and scale and other things? You can actually select this hand is actually simply panning. And this move button is need when you move your object. So this one is will move. And rotate is the one that you can rotate. But this can be also accessed by Q W E R T. Oh, why? You so until if you select Q, it will go to hand. W, it will go to move. E will select rotation. So this one is actually best with your keyboard. And then I'm going to rotate it. So you can actually press E or you can click this one. And then when you actually rotate, the sun's angle, you probably see that the shadow is changing. You, you see that? But this one doesn't really change that much. But now you probably change the location. 
So light will be important. So what does it like? The light will light is the one that defines how we see the world actually. And we and then directional light is the one that we uh, when we define a sunlight or called a daylight, and then you can change the format or the type of light by simply changing the type as directional light or spotlight. What is a spotlight? Spotlight is if you go to the uh, museum, that every painting is there with a spotlight. Or if you go to the restaurant, your table will be of uh, many restaurants with spotlight to highlight your table. And point, what is point light? Point light is an electric verb. Uh, you may not see, but once you come here, the uh, uh, the light, bird, the kind of the what is it? The the light verb is known as kind of electric light, or this kind of uh, some point light is that you use uh, point light or area light, which is kind of very highly about one. Actually, the the light you see in this room. Changing so if you look at the ceiling of this room, actually all those light is called as area light. So wide area spreading. Then so far here we are just we are going to use actually directional light, and then I will change the kind of location a little bit. Uh, and then you probably see. Uh, some change. So, what does that mean? Baked or real time? Mixed is that. So, baked is that before you switch to. So now you are going to switch this from Unity Scene View, and then you are going to upload this file to your VR headset. And then when you upload it to headset, you have multiple options. Baked is this rendering engine, bake or your scene, meaning bake means that the shadow position and everything will be ready in this computer. And finished rendering view will be uploaded to your headset. So nothing will be changed. But real time is whenever you change your position, it actually requires re-rendering of the view and calculation of it. So I would not actually recommend because many headsets have very small uh, CPU capacity and a small probably memory. So you may always want baked. And shadow time is hard shadow. Once I change that, you probably see a kind of very strong hard edge. You probably see this kind of hard shadow on a summer day or when you are in, in a kind of on a direct, under a direct light. But many cases, the soft shadow offer you a kind of real, uh, kind of smooth and reality. Uh, kind of that's something. I, and then no shadow, just eliminate the shadow. But I also not use no shadow option. So that's it. Something uh, so far just for today. I will, I will continue other different stuff, changing materiality next like this Wednesday. Uh, any questions so far? But this is relatively easy, right? Uh, this one is actually easy. Uh, so uh, just do it slowly. <laughs> Don't be stressed. Okay, your final project is not really building a high tech or high level game. So I hope you take a technical point of view. I hope you not to be stressed rather, but I hope you to spend your time while you're eating your dinner or while you're sleeping or while then you have a shower or bath. Uh, think about what you are doing. What is the perception? Um, that will change your life. I guarantee it. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. Any questions so far? Because um, actually, the notion of the reality, which is the the, the the your own definition of the world, basically defines who you are. It's interesting. The definite why the, the definition of who I am, rather, and the definition of the world is actually rather influence you the whole life career. So that's it for today. All right. Uh, so if you have any problem, just take a look at this video again after I upload it to the Facebook, and then you will be fine. All right. So. One more time, if you have any question, is this a good time to ask, or otherwise, let's call it a day.
Ja, Okay, I've opened nine. Okay, it was a bag. 